Hello, welcome to the TechBits YouTube channel. In today's topic, we're going to be discussing Postgres declarative partitioning. This is a topic that was referred to us and suggested by one of our avid viewers. This is for you. As you have noticed, we take topics and we are always looking for additional topics. So if you have any thoughts in mind, feel free to post them in the comments and we'll be glad to listen to them and create them as soon as we can. That said, let's go ahead and get started with our topic today. So Postgres declarative partitioning. It is a method of partitioning tables in PostgreSQL that allows you to explicitly declare the partitioning rules for a table. This is in contrast to inheritance partitioning, which is an older method of partitioning that uses PostgreSQL's table inheritance feature. Then we have about flexibility. It is more flexible and it is much easier to use than inheritance partitioning. It also provides several other benefits. Let's take a look at those benefits. First one, declarative partitioning supports range, list, and hash partitioning, while inheritance partitioning only supports range partitioning. It also has improved query performance. Declarative partitioning can improve query performance by allowing PostgreSQL to prune partitions that are not relevant to a query. Then we move into the simplified maintenance. Declarative partitioning makes it easier to add, remove, and modify partitions. Okay, now that we've talked some of the benefits, there are still other features. The partitioning rules are declared by using a partition clause within the create table statement. Also, the tables can have multiple levels of partitioning. They also can be created as tables or for foreign tables. And partitions can be created using range, list, hash, or partitioning methods. Last, the data is automatically assigned to the appropriate partition based on the partitioning rules. Okay, now that we've cleared all this good content, let's go ahead into the demo. The first thing we have to do is cross check to see if we have a database. So just in case, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to drop the database named my DEC partitions. Whether it exists or not, we'll get an error or success. As noticed, it does not exist. Let's go ahead and create it. We have a successful creation of the database. Now we need to connect to it. Once it's created and we're connected, we can start creating a table. It, it has been successfully created. Notice a couple of things. We have two columns that are the compound key. They become the primary key when we specify it with this statement here. Primary key is confirmed by the order ID and the order date. They're also not null. This is a must. If you're gonna have a key, it can't be null, just saying. Then we have the partition. We're indicating that it's a range partition by a specific column. And once created, we can see if the table exists now, which it does, we can describe it and you can see it's there available. Now we create the partitions. Success. Let's list how many tables we have. Now we have four. But notice that orders versus how it existed before, it's already partition table. But the others are tables. They depend on the orders table. Now, while we haven't added any data at it, but take in mind, it is much more modern. What happens if we delete orders table? I would suggest not doing this in production, clearly, but for our own purposes right now, let's go ahead and drop it. And let's list the tables. Notice that it dropped all the depending tables from the orders table. So notice that they depend originally on the partition table. That's something to keep in mind and food for thought. This covers today's topic. Feel free, as mentioned before, to suggest topics, list your comments, and any other suggestions. Let us know what other items you might be interested in as well. So that covers today's topic, and I'll see you in the next videos. Thank you.